Hi and welcome to Helicopter Train Videos. In this video we're going to continue to look at the new helicopter airman certification standards and in particular we're gonna, this video is going to cover the big changes to the helicopter private pilot ACS. In the previous video we covered the generic changes from the practical test standards to the ACS. If you haven't already watched that it would be very helpful to watch that before going through the details of this video. It covers the ACS history and goals, the task structure, the new coding system, uh, the required elements. It goes through the document organization, what they did with the special emphasis areas and ADM, how they dealt with new technologies and updated references, the additional ratings table, and some tips for students. So with this video, we're going to mainly focus on the big changes to the private pilot, so uh, the ACS for the private pilot. We'll be going through the auto rotation and max P airspeed changes, the 300 foot AGL rollout requirement for autos, the flight deck management task, and the extra task requirement in the area of operations number five, as well as the renaming and reordering of the tasks and some more information. The next videos will really dig deep into all of the tasks and the specific elements required for each one. So first of all, auto airspeed. The old PTS had a plus or minus five for the auto rotation speed. The new ACS has a plus or minus 10 knots for that. That applies to straight in autos, 180 autos, and simulated power failures at altitude. The max performance takeoff speed used to be plus or minus 10 knots. Under the ACS, it's got tighter. It's now plus or minus five knots. So that's the speed. Once you've cleared the obstacle, you're what we call the normal climb speed has, has become a little bit tighter here. For the auto rotations with turns or the 180 autos, uh, there's a few changes here. Uh, the first one being that the rollout or the turn has to be complete no lower than 300 feet above the ground. Appendix two, which is safety of flight, also stipulates that the entry must be at least 700 feet. And it makes it clear that if the applicant has not finished the turn by 300 feet, the evaluator will instruct the applicant to perform a power recovery and go around, and the task will be considered unsat. So for many of us, that may require a higher entry altitude than we've been used to, to get that turn complete. I think this is actually a plus thing because having a higher entry altitude, you have more time to make adjustments to ensure that you hit your spot. And you can see here a good example of why that rollout requirement is a good safety of flight requirement to reduce accidents like this one. Flight deck management is uh, the old cockpit management task renamed and um, obviously got some changes to it, which we'll cover in, a, in the next video. But it also has a appendix to safety of flight reference. And there it says that if an applicant fails to use ADM in uh, any task, the evaluator will note that that task has failed. But also, they will also add the ADM skill element for the flight deck management task in the notice of disapproval. So you get a, a bonus fail if you fail on ADM, you'll have two tasks. Under the area of operation five, which is the takeoffs, landings, and go-arounds, on the old PTS, the requirement was you had to do A, B, C, D, E, and at least one other task. So that would have been um, required to do a normal takeoff, normal approach, max performance takeoff, steep approach, uh, and rolling takeoff if, if applicable, which would have been if you had wheels. Under the ACS, it is very similar. You still have to do normal takeoff, normal approach, max performance, steep approach, and rolling takeoff if you have a wheel type uh, landing gear. But they've added the go around task to the requirements, and then you're still required to do one on top of that. I don't think this is a huge change really because many of us uh, would know that on check rides, for one reason or another, there may be a go-around performed anyway, whether it was getting too steep on an approach or traffic, etc. Uh, it's not a particularly hard maneuver, so uh, I don't think it's a huge change there. So now uh, we're going to go through how the tasks themselves have been renamed and reordered. We're not going to go through the actual content of the task changes. That's going to be in the next couple of videos. Here under the pre-flight preparation you can see that certificates and documents has been changed to just pilot qualifications. The reason is that the uh, about half of that content, which was uh, regarding the certificates and documents for the aircraft, have now been moved into task B, the airworthiness requirements. So task A is really just about the pilot. Aeromedical factors was renamed to human factors, but the general idea of the content is, is mostly the same. And the pre-flight procedures some changes here, pre-flight inspection became pre-flight assessment, 
cockpit management became flight deck management, engine starting and rotor engagement became power plant starting and rotor engagement. I think probably the reason changing from engine to power plant is to kind of future-proof the ACS for different types of propulsion as we switch from maybe engines to uh, electrical power plants, etc. Here is mainly um, mainly a reorder. You can see uh, there's a bit of a change up, but there's also the addition of runway lighting systems to the communication task. That's covering things like uh, the runway entrance lights and the takeoff hold light systems. They provide signals to aircraft uh, to control aircraft crossing runways or to give information to aircraft in position for takeoff. Here you can see it's really a big change up of the order. Uh, there are some slight changes to the name for clarity. So surface taxi is now taxiing with wheel type landing gear. As always, the actual content changes of each of these tasks will be covered in future videos. Under the uh, task five, there's a big order change at the bottom here. They also took the name crosswind, uh, sorry, they also adjusted the name normal and crosswind takeoff and lock climb to just normal takeoff and climb, uh, which is strange because crosswind is still part of the task for the takeoff yeah, and they did not take it out of the normal and crosswind approach. Pinnacle platform operations, they dropped the name platform, which again is a little bit strange because when you look into the actual elements of the ACS, it's still referencing Pinnacle slash platform operations. For the performance maneuvers, rapid decel, they have now gone back to also allowing the words quick stop for, I think for a while they took that out um, for, for basically a reasoning of, uh, it didn't necessarily have to be always a quick and always to a stop, but now that's back. A lot of people who've been doing this for a while were using the word quick stop anyway. The auto rotations, they added some clarity here that this was gonna be in a single engine helicopter for both the straight in and the 180 but they renamed the 180 to auto rotations with turns. What, what that means is, is that it is clarifying that there's not a need to make one continuous 180 degree turn, that you can use multiple turns as necessary to adjust your glide, which I think most people were doing, but uh, they just, just added that clarity. They also uh, still require you to make essentially a full 180 degree turn. You just can break it up into smaller pieces. We also covered the 300 feet AGL rollout and the airspeed changes that are required under this task. The FAA got bored and burnt out by this point and there are no changes to any of the task titles or order under navigation. But then they got back from their vacation and they were ready for more. So uh, here under emergency operations, you can see they added some clarity of single engine helicopters for the power plant failures, task A and B. They added an approach and landing one engine in op uh, simulated for multi-engine aircraft so that got slid, in, slid into task C and all the other tasks got pushed down one letter. So I'm not sure this is going to be used very often. I don't think there's that many people with a twin about to go and do their private pilot helicopter check ride, but that's a new task there. The FAA finally renamed setting with power Vortex Ring State too. We've already sort of talked about that in previous videos, but uh, we'll deep dive into that task in future videos. There's also a couple of tweaks here where they spelled out some of the um, some of the letters. Low RPM recognition recovery is now uh, explained what RPM is. I honestly think that if you're taking your private check ride in a helicopter, you probably know what RPM means and you probably know what low G means, but just for clarity, that's been spelled out. Under night operations, they changed the word night preparation to night operations. That's the main changes there with uh, also adding the word parking to the uh, task for after landing securing. It was already, parking was already part of the PTS in terms of um, knowledge re elements required. So it's, again, it's just kind of a clarification thing there, but the, all the details of the specific element changes in all of these tasks are in the next few videos. So if you want more information, there's links in the description on the, uh, on the video description, and also full details on the helicopter training videos website. One of the first links I highly recommend you go to look at is the full ACS playlist where you'll find more details on all the specific task changes, that overview video we already talked about, as well as uh, Amazon affiliate links to the paper versions of the ACS. If you want to buy those at no extra cost to you, that will also support helicopter train videos. If you've noticed some big changes or if you have questions, please put them in the comments below. 
For more videos on the Helicopter ACS, check out our full Helicopter ACS playlist. For other helicopter train videos, check out our Helicopter Maneuvers Guide. Or perhaps you want to follow along with a student in the cockpit from day one to check ride with our full flight lesson series. And if you haven't already, please click subscribe to get all the latest videos and help promote the channel. And finally, for more information on helicopter train videos, including articles, resources, quizzes and more, and learn how you can support this volunteer project, check out our website, helicoptertrainvideos.com. Thanks for watching.